The hardest part of doing a PhD and pursuing a career in academia is the worry of uncertainty and also it comes with a lot of isolation. From the day I started the PhD, I, I was always worried. What if I don't graduate? What I have learned is that if I spend less time and energy on worrying, I will have more space to pursue what's important in the project. And there's more chance for me to finish and actually graduate my PhD. So today, I'd like to share a little bit of what I've learned in this process facing uncertainty and isolation, very similar to how we found ourselves now. This is Vera Chen from PhD Coffee Time. If you are new to my channel, thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I will have regular video coming up and if you subscribe, you will make sure you don't miss anything. Yes, it is totally scary. I can't even go to the lab anymore. It is stressful as many people are, as you see when you go on social media, sad news are everywhere and it's hard to not let our mind go there. I originally wanted to share a video on how to write a love book, but it seems like it's not relevant for this month anymore. So I'd like to share a little bit about how we redefine focus or in a technical term, how we change our project during the middle of a project like we are doing now. Yes, I talk about the change of project because we are all stakeholder of the society. And when our country leader make a decision, we are the stakeholder and we are reacting to it. It's very similar to how you are in a part of a science project and your PI changed something and you have to respond to it. Now we are facing a world that it's deciding business is not a priority. Economic growth is something we have to set aside and we need to save lives. And human lives is now our top priority. As a consequence, we are all having to respond rapidly, stocking up toilet paper, buying non-perishable food that is going to last for months and change a way of life that we are used to. We can't socialize in the restaurant anymore. We have to stay home, cook our own meal and do our exercise on a yoga mat. That's uncomfortable, but change is the constant in life. And this is one lesson we can all get to learn and appreciate is our ability to adapt to change. While the whole world is living in fear, in the fear of uncertainty, um, in the community of PhD, I hope this shed light to how you may see yourself in the near future when you are put in important position, how you could adapt to changes and how to react positively and respond with grace. I have lived outside of my home country for the last six years and uncertainty is my friend. And I can relate to a situation like this, being in isolation and being uncertain about what's coming up next month, very much as academic postdoc. To share a little bit about myself, I had seven short contracts that I have renewed in America and I lived there only for four years. So every few months, I have to imagine myself pre preparing myself to sublease my home cut the water bill, leave the country with my two lovely cats. These are not fun. And by definition of stress is equal to change. Change of any kind creates stress. Even you buying a ticket to Bahamas on vacation is a change to your lifestyle and it can create stress to most people. And when something is not going on schedule, it is scary and it creates stress. So being postdoc and being in job that a short contract has taught me a lesson that I have to live in the moment and be the best I can for every day and take every day as the last day of my work. Vera, we're going to a research trip to New Zealand by the end of this year. Yay! We're going to New Zealand. Oh wait, no, the collaborator said you have to go next month. Okay. 
Can you look at flight tickets and write protocols okay. and buy all the reagents required for your okay. work and emailed everyone? No problem. In a workable relationship, it is not only important that we take changes, but we also have to take it positively and also be as motivating as you could to the others so that it promotes the highest efficiency. I'd like to go through something I made up called PPE because it, these days these are your protective measure to make sure you get work done. First, to prepare for the controllable, such as having three to six months of cash, expenditure of three to six months in the bank that give you some financial peace so that you know if you lose your job tomorrow, you'll be fine. What you can control is how you organize your household, how often you make a trips to the groceries, but what you cannot control is things like when they stop the lockdown and how, how much funding is going to be cut. These are something you cannot control. So focus on preparing the controllable. So by preparing yourself on the controllable, you have the peace of mind knowing that you already have done what you can. So there's no reason to be worried. That goes to my next P, meaning present. To be present in this moment, this moment can be the moment you're reading a PDF on your computer screen and reading an article and have to understand a paragraph. So focus your attention not on the past, not being angry about the news, being upset. You're not spending energy on worrying about your future, the what if. Practice that you are now in this chair, you are looking at your computer, you are reading this one sentence and you're focusing on this one sentence. That's the definition of present. The more you can train yourself to be present, the more you can get done. And after you learn how to be present with your task, with your one work that you have to do that day, you can finally become efficient. I have a whole video list on how to be efficient and that's the final E. Focus on what you can control, practice being in the moment and just be as efficient as you can in your role at your job. So similar to how intelligence and physical strength can be trained. You can go to school and improve your intelligence. You can go to the gym and train your physical strength. Your mind and your ability to focus is also a trainable skill. And perhaps this pandemic and this situation that we are all having to spend plenty of time with ourselves and being locked down at the home office is the opportunity for you to train this skill. So I hope if this video does something is to make you start to think about how much focus you can have at your work and how can you quantify it. As PhD Coffee Time aims to provide practical guidelines to PhD out there and to make the best efficiency of your PhD, I like to convert all of these that I've just talked about in a how-to video. So here are the following steps on how to work from home efficiently. So remember, control the controllable, right? And write down the biggest two to three tasks that you want to do for the next day. After you wake up in the morning, you prioritize time to do these tasks first. And I have a toggle video on how to track time. You have to track your time, especially when it, you are doing the project and you are going through this struggle of getting started. A timer is not going to lie. If you are distracted and you stop, you have to stop the timer. That's a reminder of telling you, hey, go back to focus. And you've only been on this writing for eight minutes. Stop wanting a coffee. You can last for another 20. So that go to my next point is try to stick to each task for at least continuously 30 minutes. You'll be amazed. Your brain won't want to stop after 30 minutes and you will have entered the state of flow. If you want to understand the state of flow, BioMapMaster has a video that is really practical and you can check it out on your, at your coffee break. And since we all have different home environments and we seldom work from home, most of us, be 
open to experiment different location of where you write. You may be surprised the angle that you're facing and you're not seeing all the food at the kitchen counter may help you tremendously in your concentration. And you have to be open and experiment to move your chairs, move the computer setup. And for me, I recently discovered I can't sit at the table near to my kitchen because if I look at my fridge, I start to think about food. And a good thing to do is to provide tunnel vision um, to make sure you are looking at only the work that you need to do and just be there for the work hour. The other environment that you can control is your outfit. Yes, you are at home and you can be in your pajamas all day. But I don't know how about you, but for me, if I wear something more fitted, I will be less likely to want to go back to bed and I will have more discipline at my desk. So every little bit helps, right? I suggest to have an outfit at home for the home office and when you are finished with the day you can change to your pajamas do not go to your email do not go to social media the first thing in the morning you want to first accomplish your goal and your task your tunnel visioning and laser focused with what you have to accomplish at least for that morning and then you can go to check the news and social media and have a virtual coffee with your friend online and decompress. But the most important thing is you, you are setting up your environment to make sure you don't get distracted, depressed or feeling totally lost. Try to make sure you wake up at the same time, you stop working at the same time, have a routine in the day. For me, I always finish my day with some exercise. Now I'm at home with no transportation hour. I have more time for workout and I start to work out for almost one hour a day. And thank you, Cassie from Blogulatis. She has a lot of nice fitness videos and I follow it every day. And it's lifesaver. I feel like I have a virtual friend who is there with me working out every day. Be prepared that you will experience resistance. That's the time when you are at the computer at your desk and you need to work, but your brain wander and you can't focus. My suggestion to that situation is to go on Google and type in five minute meditation exercise. You'll be surprised you just take five minutes to get into the states that you need for work. Instead of scrolling Facebook, yes, nobody wants to sit there and be bored for five minutes, but it works quite well for me. So I hope you will give it a try if you haven't done meditation before. Clear space for what's important to deliver at your job. Have a playlist that is going to calm you down. One music type that I really find useful is those alpha brain wave music, headphone and tunnel vision. But I mean, if you like heavy metal, that's your choice. It's crucial to see a positive vibe in this negative situation. A lot of time, our ability to produce good work lies on our ability to bring a positive vibe and be motivated to do better quality work. Let me start. This week when I'm in confinement, I've realized my cat loves it when I'm at home. I also found this nice new corner that is the closest to a heater that I can work and I can be warm. I also get a chance to explore all my beans and rice collection and I realize shamefully I don't need to buy any more food. I have enough food for a month. That's some positive things that I've discovered having spent time with myself and being at home. I've also found out um, there are friends who check on me and care about my well-being and it's nice to hear from friends you haven't heard from since a while. If we want to be more positive. A good exercise to do is to count your blessing when you finish the day. Count on what is the positive outcome of that day. Your brain is going to be trained. You'll be less of a complainer and more of a person who appreciates little things in life. If you think my tips are helpful, please consider subscribing and I hope I can pipe in more positive energy for all the PhD out there. We are already in isolation in a PhD program. Hang in there and you got this.
see you next time. thank you for watching.